good day friends in the lecture series on fundamental of investment we are talking of valuation of securities in the valuation of securities we are discussing fundamental analysis and in the fundamental analysis we are talking of eic approach of fundamental analysis that is analyzing the economy analyzing the industry which i have already discussed in my previous lectures in this lecture i'll be talking of company analysis that while valuing a share on a fundamental basis we analyze the company when i'm saying analyze the company it means we analyze the quantitative factors and the qualitative factors of a company right when i talk of the quantitative factors basically i mean to say about its annual financial statements like company's balance sheet company's income statement company's cash flow statements notes to financial statements auditors report corporate governance reports and these are the few things which we see that that on the basis of these financial informations and other informations we try to analyze the company we try to analyze the strength of the company and if we feel if we if we get a Uh, by analyzing these factors if we f- feel that feel in the sense there are certain bases on the base of we we come to conclusion that the company is doing well so in that case we'll value the company will the stock market will value such share price at a very or or I will put it uh, uh, give a good value to those shares right so analyzing the balance sheet analyzing the income statement cash flow statement is very very important aspect while you analyze the company and there are certain qualitative factors like business model what is the business model of the company when i talk of the business model the a way in which a company makes money it describes the company's operating operations mode of revenue generation organization structure and its sales and marketing efforts we say what is your business model if i talk of zomato if i talk of swiggy their business model is that they mix sales they take product from the restaurants right and they provide it to the customers within a very short span of time right everything is taking place online you phone you give the order on your mobile within 10 15 20 minutes your food will reach your home right so their business model is such there are certain restaurants you come to the restaurant they will sell their product you sit there in a different environment and and they will serve you the food so business model is entirely different so business model means the way you operate the business right what is your mode of revenue generation what are your source of income many a times i feel that where from the income of facebook or all these uh, google comes right their business model is different and there are certain companies their business model is they make sales sales in the physical form and they generate revenue right so what is your organization structure what is your sales efforts marketing efforts these are called business model so business model if the, we say normally if the business model is good the business model your efforts are are sales efforts marketing efforts your organization structure is good there is a greater likelihood that company will do well in in the in the uh, industry and the company will do well means the stock prices will improve the company all those companies which have a good business model the stock market gives good price and we value those shares means at a premium management is a very very important as well. management and corporate governance i'll put it to these two points in one aspect that what is the quality of your management if the professionals are managing the companies if people with experience people with i mean good track record manage the companies always the stock market gives higher price to such companies which are being managed by good promoters good directors when i use the word good directors capable directors capable management i means professional management people with integrity people with professional track record people with having um, no no such bad record that they have fudge with the accounts they have done done window dressing with the accounts their their integrity is beyond doubt right so such companies always enjoy like like the moment we say tatas 
the group of companies there are there are whole host of the Tata's are the whole conglomerate right there they from IT sector from uh, air services up to the salt they are producing hundred hundreds of type of different products in FMCG in IT sector in airways and so many sectors they are there right. So, they have a professional management they, they, they have a good track record. So, always companies which have which are being managed by good management the stock prices is high and you value them high prices in the stock market. And corporate culture what is a corporate culture whether there is a integrity whether is a, there is a I mean good value system good belief system right processing of the company is good these are called corporate culture it refers to the collective beliefs value system and processes of the company every company has set of values and goals that helps to define what the business is all about. The basis of corporate culture is expressed in terms of the policies and procedure adopted in the company's functions. Means what are your policies? Your policies are to make customers, to satisfaction of the customer is your basic policy of the company. So, in the long run, in the short run you may be a loser, but in the long run you will always be a winner. And those companies which are which see from the long term perspective point of view customer satisfaction is their ultimate goal and uh, of the company right the corporate culture is that the customer should be a happy customer the employees should be the stakeholders should be happy whether it is employees whether it is suppliers whether it is a, i mean uh, customers so those companies which are having good corporate culture such companies enjoy good price in the stock market corporate governance I was adding the when I was talking of the management I said management and corporate governance are interlinked right. What is the level of corporate governance means while reporting your balance sheet while reporting your income statement everything is clear right nothing is being concealed from the investors from the stakeholders we say corporate governance is at high level right. So, so your board of directors your management whatever their interests are it is being put forth to the to the stakeholders. So, we say there is a high level of corporate governance throughout the world those companies which are having poor corporate governance they never enjoy good stock price in the market. If there is a slightest doubt among the investors class that the corporate governance is of poor quality. So, those companies never enjoy high pricing power in the stocks right. So, it refers to the set of system and practices put in place by the company to ensure accountability transparency and fairness in order to safeguard the interest of the stakeholders. Areas of corporate governance are structure of board of directors, financial information transparency and stakeholders right means in a company if you always give priority to your shareholders right the rights of the shareholders even if there is a minority shareholders because always you know in the companies it is a, on the base of the number of votes on that basis the decisions are being made in the in the meetings right especially the annual general meeting. But even if there is a interest of minority shareholders are in, involved and the management gives importance to the interest of the minority shareholders it means the corporate governance is of high level. The financial information is is being revealed everything is being revealed in the in the balance sheet the income statement. So, it means there is a high level of uh, corporate governance structure of board of directors there are independent directors there are professional directors there are lady directors which are as per the rules right. So, we say the corporate governance is of good quality and this also includes structure of board of directors financial and yeah, this I have already talked about right. Then product differentiation and innovation in the companies where there is a product differentiation the product of product when I am using the word product it means services also like say for example, in IT industry company like Infosys, company like TCS, Wipro, SCL all of these are in the IT services companies. These IT services companies when they develop their software they sub develop their other product they differentiate their product that of the competitors. So, the type of services that TCS is providing may differ from the type of services that Infosys is providing. The type of say for example, uh, Finical that is a, there is a I mean software that is being used by the banking sector in the uh, all over the world right. So, the Finacle has its own feature there may be other softwares which which is being provided by the banking which is used by the banking sector, but there is a difference in that. So, there is a product differentiation those companies which are having product differentiation and innovation 
in their product they always command good price means price means sales price the product price and the service price and when they command good price it means their profitability will be high if the profitability will buy the share price will be high in the market so creation of a strong demand scope of innovation and product differentiation is an important factor which helps the company reap sustain substantial profit then comes certain quantitative factors like financial leverage when i was talking of industry analysis uh, in my previous lecture i talked about financial leverage see when you are talking of financial leverage means the degree of utilization of borrowed money in a business is known as financial leverage in the balance sheet the structure of the balance sheet is such there are two types of capital one is called borrowed capital other is called owners capital ownership capital like equity capital is your ownership capital the the debentures the debt the bank loan this is called your borrowed capital so if the borrow the the proportion of the financial leverage or borrowed capital is higher in your total balance sheet as compared to the equity capital the risk will be high right so if the risk is high it means if the company because of any reason is not able to do well the profitability will decline at a very faster rate at a at a substantial rate right so this financial leverage high degree of financial leverage makes a company risky so such company do not enjoy very high price power in the stock market competitive edge the competition of the company can uh, can be assessed by looking at the following what is the competitive edge market share say if you are enjoying majority of the market share bajaj auto hero motor corp these are the companies which have a good market share in the two two uh, wheeler industry right so these companies command good price if you have a good market share in the total market it means you have a higher market share and your market share is high it means your 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 sales is high sales is high means there is a likelihood that the profits will be high so market share of a annual sales helps to determine the company's relative position within the industry if the market share is high the company will be able to meet the competition successfully growth in sales i mean always the market gives high price when i'm saying market means the stock market the share price is high of those companies where sales are growing at high rate right so a company with rapid growth in sales is better for shareholders than one with a stagnant growth rate growth in sales results in growth in profit earning or profitability of the company see earning is being what is earning basically sales price minus cost right so either you are able to have good pricing power of sales price that your product is different your technology is new right you are something producing something innovative which your competitors are not producing you will able to price your product at a premium price and the other thing can be you keep your cost low you by efficient management by efficient reuse of resources you keep your cost low if you keep your cost low at the given same price you can have higher profit so earning or profitability of the company is a very very important factor so earning decides the stock value in the market growing earning result in high valuation of the stock earning earnings are operating profits earnings are generated from operating sources and non operating sources so following factor influence the earnings of the company change in sales revenue means if your total sales increases sales revenue increases profits will increase change in cost your if your cost decreases the profits will get impacted depreciation method what is your depreciation policy that also makes your impact on the earning inventory accounting method wages and salaries of the workers who are working in the organization income tax and other taxes right in in a company where the tax rate is very high or suppose the taxes are very high that will make an impact on the profitability so measurement of earnings can be done in multiple ways there are different i would say measures of measuring the profit i'll just put it a few things in perspective i want to bring something in perspective so a few points in perspective that gross profit gross profit you know in accounting sales minus cost of goods sold other ways earning before interest and taxes depreciation and amortization we call it ebitda right so gross profit minus operating expenses in the industry this is also a very important measure of profitability then comes earning before interest and taxes ebit known as ebit 
so earning before interest taxes depreciation and amortization minus depreciation and amortization right so that is called so earning before interest and tax the other measure of measuring the profitability is earning before tax that is ebit the previous one minus interest income right so that is called earning before tax similarly we can talk of earning after tax means if you i mean whatever is left earning before tax minus tax that is called earning after tax so these are the some of the measures normally used in the industry used by the companies for measuring the profitability each of these measures has its own significance has its own meaning i am not going into that detail but from this lecture point perspective these are the this is these are the measures by which you value a share so earning growth rate is important for equity valuation and company analysis the growth of eps means if the prop i say i say earning after tax earning after tax which is the last measure uh, which i put it here so earning after tax means after paying depreciation amortization everything whatever is left out that is and after even paying tax whatever is left out is called earning after tax so this earning after tax is available for shareholders and your your which you can distribute so earning growth rate is important for equity valuation and company analysis right so growth of eps is analyzed using trend analysis and regression framework i'll i'll be talking of what is eps right so apart from this there are certain other facts i'll later on in, in this very lecture i'll be talking of eps price earning ratios so stability of sales a company with stable sales revenue will have more stable earning wide valuation in sales lead to variation in capacity utilization the fall in market share indicates a declining trend for the company even if the sales are stable stability of sales should be compared to market share friends when i am talking of all these measures we are see what we are discussing we are discussing about company analysis that in the fundamental analysis we are one of the important method of finding out the intrinsic value of a share is fundamental analysis and in their fundamental analysis what we do we make analysis of the economy industry and company and how the company is being analyzed that what is the value of the company what is what what should be the price that should fetch of a share in the market right so there are the various factors which we are talking of what is the rate of the growth of the sales i mean whether there is a stability in the sales what are the different um, financial parameters by analyzing the balance sheet by analyzing the income statement by analyzing the cash flow statement right so these are the various factors which we analyze in the company analysis what is the production another measure is what is the production efficiency when i say production efficiency means productivity of the organization productivity of the workers and the cost at which you produce if you have good technology if your workers are efficient if the productivity level is high in the mark in the in the company obviously it means you are enjoying production efficiency so production efficiency means producing the maximum output and minimum cost per unit of output when you will produce the minimum at minimum cost possible means when you are using good technology when you are using your resources efficiently when the productivity level is high of the workers obviously you will able to produce at a minimum cost so this measures how well the production processes is performing increasing efficiency boost the capacity of the business without any change in the number of inputs employed means with the same inputs you can produce more with the same number of labor hours you can produce more with the same number of machine hours you can produce more with the same quantity of the raw material you can give higher output right so production efficiency results in increase in the profitability low operational cost optimum use of company's resources enhanced competitiveness and market share and superior return to investors and this is what investor want right so what investor want investor want superior return so superior one of the major of getting the superior return is and one of the method one of the method of getting superior return is you, you if the company is having production efficiency it will lead to higher profits so there are certain measures of uh, profitability right so like roe is a very very from shareholders point of view especially 
ROE is very important, return on equity. What is left out for the equity shareholders? That is, I mean, profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by number of equity shares. That is called return on equity. As a shareholder, I am more interested in what is the percentage of return on equity. If I invest 1 lakh rupees, right, or I am talking of the at, the at the par value 10 rupees share, the equity share is of 10 rupees, right. On the investment of each 10 rupee, what percentage of return the shareholder is getting? That is called ROE, return on equity. Ultimately, shareholders, the, the, the money, the left out profit after paying everybody, after paying tax, after paying preference dividend, the profit that is left out is for the equity shareholders, right. So, profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by number of equity shares, right. So, or you can say equity shares fund uh, that into 100, that is called return on equity. Earning per share. So, earning per share means now we are in the ROE, we are calculating on the total equity shares fund. Earning per share is calculated on what is the earning per share, that is preference, profit after tax minus preference dividend by divided by number of shares. Suppose your company profit after tax minus dividend is 10 crore and your company has issued 1 crore equity shares, it means earning per share is 10 rupees. It is a very, very important indicator for the shareholders point of view, right. And in the stock market, we see that is what is the price earning ratio. If the price earning ratio is very high, it has two meaning. One thing is people are expecting that in future, the company will do really well it will grow at a faster rate, profitability will increase at a fast rate and the growth rate of the company is high. So, in such companies, for such companies, for such industries, the stock market give high price. But if I generalize it, company which is having very high P ratio, they are called expensive shares, means they, 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 their value is at present is high. So, high P ratio implies that market is optimistic about the growth of the company and hence ready to pay a premium to the buy the share. However, high PE ratio also means that the share are overpriced in the market. So, it has two meaning. Why people are giving higher price on the base of earning? What is high PE ratio? Market price per share divided by EPS. I am saying, I was saying in my previous example that supposing earning per share comes to be 10 rupees, that 10 crore profit, 1 crore equity share. So, 10 crore divided by 1 crore equity share, EPS comes to be 1 rupee. If the market price of such share is 30, it means the P ratio is 3. If the market share is 1000, it means the P ratio is 100. But earning per share is 10 rupees and the market price share is 1000 rupees or say if say if I say 100 rupees on a 10 rupees earning, if the share price is 100 rupees, it means P ratio is 10 times, right. So, P ratio depends, I mean, on the nature of the industry also. Some in, There are certain industry where there is, in, especially in the IT sector, information technology sector, P ratio is high. In the finance sector, P ratio is low because of the nature of the industry. So, the price earning ratio also indicates whether the price is overpriced or underpriced and what is the growth prospect. So, similarly, a low P ratio implies the market is pessimistic about the earnings of the potential of the company or it could mean that the stock is underpriced in the market. Uh, just to give you one or two example, like company like Power Finance Corporation, which is a, in the PSU company, company like REC, Rural Electrification Corporation. These companies are having very low PE ratio. Despite they are having good profits, but they are still in the market, they are having lower PE ratio. So, and normally we say these, these companies are underpriced. Market in fact should value them more. But market is market in the sense we presume one of the theories efficient market hypothesis. So, we presume the market is correct. So, they are I mean but but fundamental analysis if you make we say these shares which are having very low PE ratio they are underpriced right. Similarly, book value to market ratio. So, book value per share divided by market price share. So, a high book high book to market ratio implies market is pessimistic about the growth or rate of the company, therefore, the share is traded at a low price. So, stock with high book to market ratio is considered as value stock. So, friends, these are the various measures of company analysis. So, what we do is basically there are two factors, quantitative factors and qualitative factors. So, in the quantitative factors, 
what we see is basically we analyze the the statements that is the financial informations of the company the balance sheet the income statement the cash flow statement the footnotes of the the income and the balance sheet income statement and the balance sheet right so these are the and and in that we see what is the profitability what is the growth what is the pe ratio of the company there are various ratios which we calculate in financial accounting and with these with the help of these ratios we find out whether the price is overpriced or whether the share price is underpriced and what value the share should command in the market in the qualitative factors i will say corporate governance the processes in the in the in the company the type of management and the important aspects of the quality of the technology the innovation that the company is making so these factors influence the share price and on the base of that these factors we value share so this uh, after this i mean means by after talking of the company analysis we have made completed eic approach of fundamental analysis that is analysis of economy analysis of industry and finally industry analysis of company in this lecture i have analyzed about the what are the factors on the base of which we analyzed a company thank you very much